I'm kind of happy I invested all those hours into Watch Dogs and Watch Dogs 2 because I'm an idiot. And the fact that I played that and it kind of ties into this in some way, shape, or form really helped me. You may not have that same problem. <laughs> Hey guys, it's G from The Effort, here to review the Netflix original film, Anon. So, this is from Andrew M. Nickel, and the reason I bring up him is because I've seen a lot of his works. When I was in high school, they showed us Gattaca, and he used DNA as part of the way the world is constructed and how it's organized. He did a movie called In Time. He also co-wrote and I believe or wrote or and co-produced The Truman Show, one of my personal favorites, with Jim Carrey, who's the best. And uh, In Time, as I mentioned, uh, is another one that deals with time itself. He takes these really high concept themes and stuff that's going on in today and applies them to how our lives are ruled. So in time, it's our, the actual time we have left is our currency. Um, in again, Gattaca, it's all about DNA. And in this one, it's all about technology and how we have, everybody has their mind's eye or maybe a select few people have their mind's eye. Didn't explain it too, too well. Where much like if you've played Watch Dogs, when you can hack into another person's phone to hack another device to then access another camera while you're stationary in one area, this is how people kind of operate. Um, stars Clive Owen and Amanda Seyfried, who was also in In Time. And Clive Owen plays a detective named Sal so he's investigating these strings of murders and uh, it's it's really cool in the beginning so the reason that he is so effective and they're so effective is because they can actually see what the witness saw not what they're saying so you have actual fact uh, however there's this thing going around killing people this person that's able to hack that and show something else so while he's killing somebody he actually makes the person that he's killing see through his eyes him killing them I think it's quite interesting how they construct that and they're trying to find this person. Uh, Amanda Seyfried comes in. She is someone without really a history has found a way to manipulate it. Like when you look at a person and this mind's eye thing starts constructing itself, you see everything. You look at a telepost, you look at a phone, you look at a watch, whatever it is, it's all digital. It's like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the whole deal is just right in here, which, you know, could probably happen in about three years by the way things are going. But Amanda Seyfried's character is uh, different. She doesn't have that, so he can hack into her her but she is a hacker she's able to go into things and erase certain things and mess with people's heads and so sal has to get her to help him in ways and he's trying to find out her and all the while trying to build this story around this really crazy concept in a dystopian world where technology is pretty much everywhere and you can't get away with anything it's got a really cool concept and it's delivered in a really interesting way. In time, you're watching people with like their life time clock thing and using it as currency. I was like, this is really cool. The world they create is cool. The rich live in a different part. To get to the rich, you have to spend your time, aka time out of your life to get there. And in this one as well, it's using the technology that we have to, uh, in a way that's been being manipulating and manipulating us. And it's really kind of harrowing to look at because you're like, okay, yeah, as I mentioned, this will happen very soon. And it's gonna be really, really weird. So the concepts there are good. I've always been a fan of Clive Owen, like in almost everything he's done. He was good in this or as good as he can be. Uh, Amanda Seyfried is fine in this as fine as she can be. The world that's around is very dark and gloomy and feels very tech-y. It's kind of like the Matrix when you get into the weight Matrix. It's got this hue to it. Uh, even though the whole world is like that, it's still got that hue. Also, when they're displaying the ways that the detectives and Amanda Seyfried and people are using the technology, again, very watchdogs-like where it's this spider map of things and they go into one port and to another and another proxy and another proxy and then, you know, do, do stuff like that. Also, just making a quick phone call, just standing here and it'll say, calling this person. Hi. And then you just start talking like it's a Skype session through your mind's eye. Uh, another cool part was when they were like looking at a witness of a murder. Um, it, he actually goes into the baby's mind's eye to look at what the person that he was investigating was saying and if that was true and if he did anything else in the scene outside of what he was saying so it's really crazy how it's stretched um also the, the idea of just being able to walk to a, a window shop or go window shopping look at a thing and it'll actually physically go or digitally go on your hands you can see what it looks like super handy in cases like that so again super high concepts really interesting stuff and again and the performances were, were decent for something like this the issue that Andrew Nichol does have with some of his movies, again, I go back to an in time, uh, again, Gattaca a little bit, you know, Lord of War, the host as well. He starts off super strong. A lot of it is really strong. Again, the concepts are really strong. 
However, he does tend to muddy himself towards the end. It's as if he's trying to really force these concepts in and really get this idea out, which would probably be amazing in a pitch meeting. Guess what I've got? This! And everyone's like, yeah, this sounds awesome. But in the actual making of the movie, he misses some things. So the story itself, you kind of find yourself, especially in the second to last half, wondering who you're actually following, what you're actually following. It seems to lose focus in some parts and, you know, comes back and you kind of forget what you're actually there for. It seems like a series of things to show us this world that is using technology this way and not really telling us a really clear and cohesive story. That's kind of the biggest glaring issue. The writing isn't the strongest thing thing in the world and it's just wanting to show us that this world is gross and dirty and people are still doing the same things years later it just didn't work as well with again the writing which was okay and by the end of it it does close out okay uh but again everything in that second half to the into the third half is just kind of really muddy and you're kind of left like man you had a really good idea here and you were starting off really strong but eh, so Anon, um, again, not too bad. It's, it is definitely more so a made-for-TV movie, uh, much like In Time was. Uh, good concepts in there, really cool imagery. Kind of makes you think about the world and where it's going because he does that. He's good at doing that. Again, crowning achievements, being Gattaca, and being the Truman Show for sure. And now we've got technology, then we had time and all that stuff. So again, high concept stuff, uh, more style than substance, and that's kind of the bare bones of it. Uh, would I recommend it? If you really liked In Time, I think you are going to like this just for the plain fact of that. Um, if you found some issues within time, much like I did, you're going to find the same issues here. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's nice that Clive Owen's back into it. Amanda Seyfried is fine in it. Again, constructing a cool world, all that in this dystopian world of technology. And uh, yeah. So Anon, if you've seen it, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts on Instagram. And for all those people that enjoy listening to long podcasts, I have started one with this channel. It's not in the channel in YouTube. If you go to anchor.com, I believe we're also on Apple Music and all that. I'm going to put a link in the description to the Anchor channel below. But uh, I did a deep dive. It's two and a half hours. It is long of a full breakdown of Infinity War with a buddy of mine who's a huge, huge fan. I also did one on directors. I've got one of horror coming up pretty quick. And I've got a few other people lined up. But until next time, I'm G, and I am out.